Hi, my name's Dave, I'm also known as Infected Flinch, and welcome to DNT Games. Uh, I, I'm basically a guy who does a YouTube channel uh, that does all kinds of wacky stuff, but this is more the serious side of my games design life, and I want to do a bunch of tutorials on Unreal. Now, and on Heart, I've actually physically done this once, uh, and the capture completely went dog-eared. It wasn't very good. Um, but enough of that. I want to tell you about the basics of Unreal. So this is going to be just all the basics. And if you can hear all that, that's my, my partner, my girlfriend, making cakes next door. So you've got the, uh, the added joy of hearing random noises next door. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is Unreal. So essentially with Unreal, when you first load everything up, you do have a option to pick what kind of game you want to make. So I just picked the first person example, um, and this is the viewport that you use with your game. Now, um, the first thing you need to know when you're moving your camera around is to hold the right mouse button down. Uh, I can't say how uh, important that is. As you can see, you can just look around. There's the sun, puts the sun in, which is pretty cool. So uh, if you're used to other uh, 3D modeling uh, software, usually when you want to look around, you hold the Alt key. That just does nothing in this. Uh, when you hold the left mouse button down, you hold Alt, you kind of spin around on, the, on a pivot where you're looking. So it's not all that helpful, if I'm frankly honest. Especially when you're doing it with the right mouse button, it just makes you go, if you just push it backwards and forwards, you just do a zoom in kind of thing. So. That's how that works, um, but also as well, when you want to look at things in the actual world, it's normal first person shooter mechanics, you know, like with the controls, it's W, A, S, and D. So yeah, W makes you go forwards, your S makes you go back, A and D make you go left and right. So it's just standard uh, movement. The other thing which is pretty cool with this is these things up here. Um, so you've got your, your select and translate, your rotate, and your scale. Uh, you, you can usually do these through uh, W, E, and R. So, as you can see, it changes how the actual uh, icon looks, and it always works on W on W. Sorry, on X, Y, and Z. So, in the bottom left-hand corner here, this is your best friend. So, uh, always think of it and do it with your fingers. Uh, I can't really show you, but always think of X, Y, and Z. So. I can't be bothered doing that properly now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, scale. Uh, so like, as you can see, you can physically grab it. Um, if it's gonna let me, I don't think it is because it's just the normal. Yeah, that's gonna be static. So when you use the normal default level, you will have a base kind of level and it won't let you do anything with it. Um, so essentially what you can do is, is bring in items from the left hand side here. So the modes uh, is where all your kind of fun stuff happens. So you've got your, what you can place, what you can paint, what you can do with the landscape, your foliage, and geometry editing. Um, so in terms of just placing things, it's just normal objects. So your cubes, uh, your spheres, your cylinders. Um, let's go nuts, let's have a cone in there as well. And you can physically move it up like that. Stick them up like that. Um, as you can see, there's a nice little shadow coming off that. So you can click your scale. Make it bigger, make it huge, make it small, tiny infinitesimal. Um, and why not do a bit of rotating? Now what you can see, one of the one of the things here is, is actually the degree of, of the actual amount of rotation that you do. So it does it in fives on this at the moment, because I say it on fives. But what you can do is, is these here, um, you can set the position of where it snaps and also the rotational grid value as well as the actual scale as well so you can kind of change it so you can click this change it to 45 degrees so every time you turn it changes it 45 degrees each time so it, it once you know where these things are it can make things a lot easier uh, rather than having to mess about where you want to put things so that's the kind of simpleness of it of just those two bits now at the bottom you've got the content browser Content browser includes everything that you've ever made, uh, that you've imported from Maya, uh, blueprint, blueprint classes, say that fast, with your teeth in. So all your good stuff is all down here. Um, we'll not go into blueprints yet, it's a little bit heavy going for the basics, 
but you can click this little button here and it shows you everything that where your contents you know what you've made and why it's there now your best friend up here is the world outline and now this thing is it's going to get very cluttered very quickly with everything in your world here but this this is one of the best places to kind of you know sort everything out and create new folders and so you put your cube in there but also as well the cool thing here is is that you can select each object and it will highlight each of these objects and so like the fog i'm not going to fog on this one but that's that's just how the fog works and how you see the world um, but as you can see you can just select it and if you double click each of these it takes you straight to it so it's pretty cool you can just kind of do that so yeah that's 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 the simpleness of that also as well if you've got a little roller ball on your mouse you can do zoom in and zoom out on that which makes life a lot easier now the other thing that you're going to have to learn about i've just clicked my cube here is the details part here now this part here shows you how the cube or object in question is actually built up so like for for example if you have the uh, player start here which i've clicked you'll have the capsule component so that's the actual hidden barrier that actually houses that character uh, you might have the actual mesh the gun some lighting it all kind of gets populated in this little bit here but to go back to the cube as you can see you can have location how it's relative into the world and how big that is and you can even just type stuff in moves it so you know you can just put 100 and it's in centimeters uh your rotation uh how it moves so you can literally just move it like that which is kind of cool and scale uh just how big you want that sucker to be you know that's literally that so those are the simple things so uh, undo that uh, if you want this is something to do with how like how the actual object works so if it's static uh, it's basically just for fastest rendering and stuff like that so it has the light baked upon the object uh, when it's movable is when it's actually using it's really processor processor intensive so it's doing real-time lighting usually go for static it makes life a lot easier because you can build your lighting up here on this option up here um, I won't go into all these things up here but the play button it's basically how you can just start the game. Normal controls. Uh, escape gets out of that. Um, but yeah, building your line up here. But there's all this, all this other stuff up here. Settings, how that works. Settings is always good if you want to kind of change how, it, you know, physically with the engine scalability. And uh, at the moment, I've got all the best stuff. Anyway, going back to the details, um, kind of but we will go into cinematics as well so don't worry about that on matinee so that's something else we'll go into now the cool thing about this is if you say i've got a cone over here but i just think oh man i really don't want that cone there what you can do is is literally see the bit that's called static mesh you can click this and you can then change it to something else so you can have the same object in the same location relative to your world but just change it um, to whatever you wanted. But I'll put it back to the cone, which isn't there anymore. The cone's gone, <laughs> but it was a cone. You saw it, you knew it was a cone. So yeah, there's that aspect of it. You can change the actual material upon that through here. So you can see there, that's the actual body of the first person player. Uh, the gun, if you want to do that. So also as well, the letter F allows you to focus on it. If, if you can't be bothered to actually double click in the outliner up here f is your friend so as you can see it's applied the material on that um pretty poorly um but yeah it's on there what you can also do is simulate physics which is pretty cool when you press play as you can see you can then push it off so when you don't have physics on it will just stay there so yeah simulating physics uh, you can basically say how, how heavy it is if gravity is going to actually affect it any constraints collisions that's more to do with how it works physically there's more to do with blueprint classes on that um, lighting and rendering rendering is just simple is do you see it do you not um, you can use that in aspects of like you know if you've got a landscape that you want people to kind of see the landscape but you can't you don't want them to get any closer so if, like if they don't want them to fall off a cliff or something you could just have it like that um, so yeah I'll show that in practice 
So I'll just put my cube here. So when you start a play, I'll just basically put it here, make it a little bigger, make it a bit higher. So what you can do with that is, is then simulate uh, collisions and then make it disappear. So if I remember, <laughs> I got it right eventually. But as you can see, you can't see it, but it will not let me go any further. So yeah, that's how that works. That's just simple, simple ways of how that works. So the last thing I will show you um, is lighting. We'll talk about box triggers and sphere triggers in another time because that's more to do with blueprint classes again, but that's a whole different kettle of fish in itself. So lights, lights are, you know, the way to make your place look really good. You can have the worst models in the world, but as soon as you stick a bit of lighting on it, it looks phenomenal. So directional lights, are more about the sun so it's like you know it's just a directional light as you can see by the icon uh, it's just more about how the sun looks and with that you can change how that physically you can even use light shaft occlusion so you can kind of use fog and atmosphere how intense you want that to be are you really intense or not even there what color you want it to be yeah you know there's loads of stuff you can know where it's coming from temperature how hot you want it to be how cold you want it to be back and forth like that um, but yeah there's a lot of stuff to play around with the only other thing is is something called IEFS IEFS yeah so it's, it's basically how the light looks within your world now if you were kind of using it in regards to just a normal point light which is just their look just like a normal bog standard light so kind of like say like a light bulb what you can do is you can change how the attenuation of that works how big you want it as you can see the bigger it is the more it affects the shadows on the objects as you can see there look you can see around here but what the IES does if you can drag it over here you can change the way the light looks um, so you imagine if you can have ultraviolet lights or anything like that you can change it stuff like that and make it look different but you can use the intensity of that so it changes it also as well you can have skylights you can change the way the light works in terms of just like the whole world with that that's just a normal skylight going more into that in more detail another time and there's spotlights as well so box standard really um you can just kind of change the way the light looks um you, same again intensity make it brighter make it less change the color but most of you most of your world can be created through spotlights and, and spotlights spotlights and point lights rather sorry so most of your fun comes from that so yeah that's that's essentially just the basics of that of just how it works and how it looks um we will go i mean if people like this i'll go into it further and how things work but playing it and playing around and just just messing about basically see what you can do you know and, and have a bit of fun that's what unreal should be about uh and killing yourself oh! so comment like and subscribe as you normally do um, do check out my main channel which is uh, Infected Flinch I'll leave a link in the description and on here right now if you want me to do more I will do but that's just the basics of Unreal really um, but there's hours of fun to be had absolutely hours of fun lots of stuff you can do um, and hopefully I'll see you with the next one alright see you later